Hello friends, this is Susan with Susan Monroe Art and I am really excited about today's project. We're going to do a mini painting, look how cute, a little fall painting using only three colors. I have Scarlet Lake, Windsor Yellow, and this is French Ultramarine Blue. Now don't worry if you don't have these exact colors, you can use a yellow red and blue that you have, but that's what I used. And I made it a mini painting just because that's easy and doesn't take as much time, but it's a great learning method for learning about mixing the colors. And we're also gonna learn how to draw it. So I'll take you through it from start to finish and I hope you enjoy it. So let's get going. Here are the supplies you're gonna need for this painting. You're going to need three colors. This is Windsor Yellow. French Ultramarine Blue and Scarlet Lake for my red. If you don't have these exact colors, just use a yellow, a blue, and a red that you have, and you can still make this work. The shades might be a little different, but it'll still work. All right, then you're gonna need a small sheet of watercolor paper, just a little scrap. This one is maybe three by four inches. You're gonna need a round watercolor brush. That's the shape of these that comes to a point. I used an eight and a four, but you can use whatever you have at home. You're gonna need a pencil to draw the picture. You're gonna need a paper towel to blot your brushes and get the extra paint off of them. And then you're also going to need a cup of clean water to rinse your brushes. Now let me introduce the colors that I used in my painting. I used Scarlet Lake, Windsor Yellow, and French Ultramarine Blue. And here I did a little chart. I call this my color recipes before, just showing how uh, the colors mix together. So if I make a large circle of a color, like this large circle of yellow means I used a lot of yellow. Small circle means just use a little of that color. So a little blue, a lot of yellow, a little blue, gave me this pretty bright green. Equal size circles means equal amounts of yellow and blue gave me this green. A small amount of yellow and a large amount of blue gave me this color green. And I went ahead and did that for the three main mixes, uh, blue and yellow, yellow and red, which gives you orange and blue and red, which gives you purples. And you can see I sort of adjusted a little less of one, equal amounts, a little less of the other to see the, the variations in color I could get. And then down here in the bottom, I did equal amounts of yellow and just a little blue, and that tones down your orange. We're gonna be using that color quite a bit in our painting today, uh, just so it's not so intense and so bright. And here I made a brown by using a lot of blue, fair amount of yellow, mixed it up, made a nice strong purple, and then added a little red um, until I got this nice brown. And you can adjust the shade of this brown depending on how much blue, yellow, or red you add. So I just wanted to quickly go over that before we start painting. So let's get on with drawing our, our, our picture that we're gonna be doing today. Before we start painting our picture, I thought it'd be nice to do a little practice drawing. So I'm gonna show you how to draw the pumpkin and I have my my visual aid, this orange that I've drawn lines on. It looks sort of like a basketball. I didn't have a real little pumpkin to show you. But what I wanted to show you with this is, you know how a pumpkin has these sort of lines, creases that divide it into sections as it goes around. So I've drawn those on this orange to show how the sections that are closest to you are going to look the biggest. And then the sections look smaller and smaller as they go around the sides. So you're really gonna wanna show that in your drawing of your pumpkin. A big difference between the orange and the pumpkin though, is that the pumpkin comes in at the top and in at the bottom. So let me draw this. Here's my pumpkin. I'm making a fat squatty pumpkin. You could make a tall skinny pumpkin if you want. It's your pumpkin, you do what you want. And I'm gonna choose a spot, not up right at the top, but right here a little under. That's where my stem is gonna come out. I'm just gonna draw a little stem there, okay? Now these sections, the lines dividing the pumpkin into sections are going to come out. And in real life, they would go around the pumpkin and up underneath because the pumpkin is indented at the top and indented at the bottom, All right? So I just wanna make sure I show this indentation at the top. 
Sorry, my window is open. It's such a beautiful day. I hate to shut it, but I know you can hear the cars. I hope that doesn't bother anybody too much. Anyway, let's get going drawing these sections. You're going to go up this hill. That's the start of the divot in the top of the pumpkin. Around, down, and under. And here we're going to do the same thing again. Up the hill. Around. Down in my mind, I'm coming back under here. And then... Once I get up here, it's going to be more foreshortened. I'm not going to be able to really see the curve it's making as it goes underneath, so I don't have to show that. These are going to be my biggest sections. And then I'm going to start making my sections look a little smaller. My dog is doing something like that. Okay. Dog is gone. I'm making these side sections look closer and closer together. I think I'm going to erase this part. And then it does the same thing through the back. All right, so you can see you have to follow the contour of the pumpkin. Okay, you're starting down in the divot, up and around, up and around, up and around. So you might want to practice drawing a couple of pumpkins before you draw the one for your, your painting. One other thing I like to do is, you know, pumpkins, they their sections are not flat. Like on the orange, these lines go in. So I'm gonna show that by putting little indents around the bottom and around the top. So you can see how that makes the pumpkin look a little more realistic. Wherever there's a line, and just make that little indent. And that could be your pumpkin. And when it comes to drawing your flowers, daisies are fun and easy to draw. And I have a little trick to make sure that your petals, when you draw them, they don't get, sometimes they get a little off and pointing the wrong way. You wanna make sure your petals always point right toward the center of the flower. And to do that, I draw them sort of like an airplane propeller Side side, and then I start filling, and the petals are smaller where they come into the center, and bigger the further out they get. Here we go, a nice daisy, and they have leaves. You can put little jagged pieces on the leaves, too. You can also draw a flower like it's maybe pointing up toward the sun. They don't always look flat right at you. Here is the center of my flower. Here's the bowl of the flower. And I'm going to make the petals. They're coming up. up. So these are the outside of the petals you're seeing coming up around here. And then you're seeing the inside petals here and you're trying to still make sure they all point right towards the center and follow the contour of your flower like it's a little bowl there you go there's my center all right so there are just a few drawing tips now i'm going to get my little piece of watercolor paper let's get drawing Okay, there's my drawing. Let's get painting. The first thing I'm going to do before I start painting is I'm going to give each of my colors a little squirt of water to sort of activate the paint. And I'm taking, this is a number eight brush. It's a little big, but it comes to a nice fine point. Just use whatever brush you have. I'm going to wet it. And the key things we're going to remember are blue and yellow. Make green, yellow, and a little red. Make orange. 
and a mix of all three will make a brownish shade. Straight yellow, blue, red. I usually have to work with this a little bit to get it to the right shade of brown I want. It's constantly sort of balancing, adding more of one color to counteract another color. You just need to play with it. There we go. I think that's a pretty nice neutral. Let's take my orange. I'm going to put just a light coat. Now I can always make a stronger orange by using more red. It's more of a red orange there and less yellow. You can add more yellow to change the color and then to dull the color down a little bit so it's just not so bright I just add a teeny bit of blue to it and it makes it a little less saturated and a little more like a real pumpkin color still wet so I'm just gently brushing in places where there's going to be a little shadow into the wet paint following these sections because those go in and so there'll be a shadow on them and then say my sun's coming from up here my shadow under my pumpkin is going to be like this okay. I'll let that dry just going to get straight up some of this yellow and let's go into this flower and it's okay if I get the yellow on the middle of the flower because I'll be painting that over with a darker color anyway. And it won't make much difference. And I decided to add a little brown acorn down here in the bottom. I'm going to just paint that all brown. And of course I want to use some brown on my stem. I'm going to let that dry before I do anything else. I'm going to dry it with my hair dryer and then be right back. And I'm going to make some more orange. Orange usually has more yellow than red inside it. And I want to brighten this up a little bit. I'm just going to make a little glaze over all of it. Light glaze. I'm going to dry it and go back and work on those shadows again. I'm going to add a little blue to make my shadow color again. When you're painting with watercolor, you're constantly doing this sort of push and pull back and forth to get the right color, the right shades. You know, it got a little duller. I put a glaze on that's a little brighter. It's a little too bright. I can put a glaze on to make it a little, a little less bright. Um, that's the beauty of watercolors that you can, they're transparent and you can see through them and use that to your advantage. Now, let me see. Let me do this again. Now I'm painting on it. The paint is, the paper is dry. The paint is dry. I put these lines in before the paper was wet and I was painting very loosely. Also, I've switched brushes. I'm using a number four brush, smaller brush. My sun is coming from here, so it's going to hit. This is going to be the focus of the light and it's going to be shadows back beyond here. I'm going to wet my brush, blot off a little water, and I'm going to run that wet edge of the brush right along where I want that color to blend in a little bit, make the edge a little softer. Now let's keep on going around.
It's getting to look a little more three-dimensional now. I'm going to dry it one more time and put another coat on. I'm getting a little darker with each coat, and I'm really getting toward a brown now for my final shadows. Mixing a red and blue and yellow. The more blue, the darker it's going to be. Now I've made it really dark, but I can fix it by adding a little more red and a little more yellow. You just have to keep playing with it until you get the color you want. Okay, there you go. Let's draw a shadow from the stem. While this is drying, I'm going to work on the stem. Make a nice dark color to show some, some shadow on that stem. And give it a little texture up here at the top where it was broken off. There we go. Now why don't we work on some grass? We're going to make our green with the yellow and blue. I always like to start lighter and work darker. So Now we can switch over and work some more on the flowers. I'm going to make some yellow and red again, a little orangey color, and I'm going to add it just toward the center of, of the petals. And then wet my brush, blot it, and run that wet brush along the edge where I put the color to make it have a, a just a little bit of orange in the center. Work on our acorn. The acorn's gonna have a shadow down on the bottom. And then here's its little cap. And I'm gonna draw little cross hatches to make it look and it's stem. I think I want to darken this up a little more too. To me, the biggest problem I see in a lot of watercolors is people are afraid to push the darks and having a good contrast between dark and light is what really makes your watercolors pop. So don't be afraid to put in the darks. Now let's make a darker green. To make the grass, I'm just making, starting down at the bottom, quick little stroke and lift, stroke and lift, stroke and lift, a quick lift, stroke and lift. And of course there's going to be a shadow on this side of the pumpkin. Oh well, goodbye little flower. You were nice, but I'm covering you up with the shadow. Now I'm going to make my dark to put in the center of my daisies. Finally. Great, I'm really pleased with how this is looking. So my next thing is I'm going to just go in and erase some of these pencil lines that are in here. 
And just so you know, anywhere you paint over a pencil line, that pencil line is staying there because the paint is over top of it protecting it. I don't mind it unless they're just stray pencil marks like these are. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you are going to paint your own great pumpkin and um, have fun doing it. So if you like this, please like and subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up and I hope you have a happy fall. Thanks for watching. Bye.